Thank you, Eric. Someday you're going to have to teach me how to do that. Somehow it just sounds different from when you do it and I do it in the shower. I, I just got to tell you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, it's a great day to celebrate and recognize Memorial Day. It's too bad we have to do it, but the fact that we do it is grand. If you would, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the posting of the colors and the national anthem. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for those who have given their lives in the service of our country. When the need was greatest, they stepped forward and did their duty and to defend the freedoms that we enjoy and to win the same for others. O oh God, you yourself have taught us that no love is greater than that which gives itself for another. These honored dead gave the most precious gift they had, life itself, for loved ones and neighbors, for comrades in arms and country, and for us. Help us to honor their memory by caring for the family members they left behind, by ensuring their wounded comrades are properly cared for, and by being watchful caretakers for the freedoms for which they gave their lives, and by demanding that no other young men and women follow them to a soldier's grave unless the reason is worthy and the cause is just. In God's name we pray, amen. Post the colors. I'm Lieutenant General Jan Hewley. United States Marines, retired for 10 years now, as a matter of fact. It just goes by like that, I can tell you. Um, I've been the president and the CEO of the Marines Memorial now since the 1st of November, and I will tell you I'm honored to be here and amongst all of you. Thank you very much for coming, for taking the time out of a Memorial Day weekend and spending it with us. Winston Churchill once said, if I have to speak for 10 minutes, I need a week to prepare for it. If I'm to speak for an hour, I'm ready right now. <laughs> Let's hope that I'm ready to speak, but for a short period of time. I thought about, what am I going to talk about? What is, to, this, to this august audience, most of you uh, have been there and you've done it. And now we're here to remember those who have gone before us. How do I express my feelings for that? Well, I, I realized I'm going to pale in comparison to others. So as what I did is I went out and I did some research on others who have spoken on this topic far more eloquently than I have. Let me just start by saying this all started back in 1868 and it was called Decoration Day. It began shortly after the Civil War when a general by the name of John A. Logan, a leader of the Northern Veterans, called for a nationwide day of remembrance. So it was designated as Decoration Day with the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country. One of the speakers there was John James Garfield, he was a former Union general at that time and spoke on the first Decoration Day at, Nash at Arlington National Cemetery. Almost 150 years later, his message about the cost of our liberty, the sanctity of our institutions, and the importance of our national unity seems intended almost for our divisive times. He noted on the solemnity of the occasion by uttering, I'm oppressed with the sense of the impropriety 
of uttering words on this occasion. If silence is ever golden, it must be here beside the graves of the 20,000 men whose lives were more significant than speech and whose death was a poem, the music that can never be sung. To foster a spirit of national unity, we would do well to remember Garfield's thoughts on the abiding value of American heroes. I love to believe that no heroic sacrifice is ever lost, that the characters of men are molded and inspired, inspired by what their fathers did, that treasured up on the American souls are all the unconscious influences of their deeds. Following his speech, 5,000 people went out and decorated the graves of the 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers that were buried at Arlington. At that time, Garfield was, on, was a congressman from Ohio. He eventually became our 20th president of the United States and would be assassinated six months after his election. Another one that I would like to quote is Oliver Wendell Holmes. Back in 1884, he was a uh, veteran of the Civil War and delivered an address two decades before his appointment to the U.S. Supreme Court in honor of, the American, of America's fallen in the most devastating conflict. He summed up showcasing his powerful oratory skills by saying, but grief is not the end of all. I seem to hear the funeral march becoming a pain. I see beyond the forest the moving banners of a hidden column. Our dead brothers still live for us and bid us think of life, not death, of life to which in their youth they lent the passion and the joy of spring. As I listen to the great chorus of life and joy begins again, and amid the awful orchestra of seen and unseen powers and destinies of good and evil, our trumpets will sound once more a note of daring, hope, and will. He also gave another speech some years later at Harvard University in Boston, Massachusetts. One of his most eloquent lines, I thought, was by simply saying, the man who commands the attention of his fellows is a man of wealth. Those who have gone before us are certainly women and men of wealth, for they command our attention to this day. And just a few months before he ascended to the presidency after the death of Warren Harding, Vice President Calvin Coolidge talked in 1923 as a civic educator when he stressed the importance of American ideals and sacrifice in his remarks. Because he was one of the first who said, war is not the worst of all evils. He honored America's falling in, Ameri in Memorial Day by saying, set the day apart to do honor to all, to the, all those now gone who made the cause of America their supreme choice. He also quoted John in the Bible when he said, greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. But perhaps the great orator and communicator, Ronald Reagan, concluded with a very appropriate remark when just like today, he observed earlier today with the music that we have heard and with our national anthem. Now I can't claim I know all the words of all the national anthems in the world but I don't know of any other that ends with a question and a challenge as ours does. Does that flag still wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave? This is what we must ask ourselves. It all started out as a tribute to those who fell in the Civil War. 750,000 dead in the Civil War. And that's from a nation that only had a population at the time of 32 million. What a devastating war that was to our nation. Decoration Day, as it was known then, gradually became known as Memorial Day, 
with the advent of World War I. It was changed to commemorate the American, American military personnel who died in all wars. It became a federal holiday in 1971. This year, let's view Memorial Day not simply as an opportunity for a long weekend, but as an occasion for reflection on the costliness of liberty. Let's remember the fallen and what was said on that first Decoration Day. Consider this silent assembly of the dead. Voices will forever fill the land like holy benedictions. Let them rest asleep on the nation's heart, entombed in the nation's love. But while they sleep in our nation's love, let us remain awake. For eternal vigilance is really the price of our liberty. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction. Holy One, help us to remember that freedom is not free. There are times when its cost is indeed dear. Never let us forget those who paid such a terrible price to ensure that freedom would be our legacy. Though their names may fade with the passing of generations, we may never forget what they've done. Help us be worthy of their sacrifice. Oh God, please help us to be worthy. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes our service. I want to thank you for coming and sharing this memorial service with us in memory of those who have paid the ultimate price. Have a great weekend.